Okay, our spaceship can fly around, and then after it flies around, it can get destroyed by the asteroids. It gets removed from the screen, and now what we need to do is figure out how do we bring it back? How do we bring it back so that we can keep playing our game? So what we'll do is we'll go back into the code. We'll go down here to our destroy ship function, and you'll notice here that in the destroy ship function, when the ship is destroyed, we minus the lives variable by one. So lives minus minus, subtract one. So this is a good place to also check to see if lives, if lives is less than one. If lives is less than one, then guess what? The game is going to be over. So if lives is less than one, we could say go to and stop the game over frame label. Now we don't actually have a game over front frame label, but this would be the place to do it. So if lives is less than one, then that means we have zero lives left, then go to and stop game over. Also, take MC lives and go to and stop on the none label. So if lives is less than one, go to and stop game over. Take the MC lives, our extra lives movie clip, and make it go to and stop the none frame label so that we have no lives left. Else, the game is still going on. And if the game is still going on, we'll do something else. Namely, we will restore the spaceship to the screen. Now to do this, well, we can do it with a set interval function which will call a function that will restore the spaceship after a certain amount of time. Now we can't do the set interval directly, we have to do it indirectly by putting it into a variable. So we'll make a variable called restore id. So I've got a variable here and actually I'll just use lowercase here. Restore id and we'll set it equal to the set interval command. So else restore ID, capital I, capital D, equals a set interval command. And inside the set interval command, we're going to give it a function that we want it to call. So we'll make a function called restore ship. We don't already have that function, so we'll have to make it. And we don't need the open and close parentheses right after it, just restore ship, comma, and then how long we want until this function is called. If we want to wait five seconds, we'll put in 5,000. So that's 5,000 ticks that it'll wait. Um, and that's equivalent 5,000 to about five seconds. So now, if lives is less than one, game is over. We go to the game over frame. We take our extra frame, set them to none. Else, we call this restore ID which will set an interval and call a function in five seconds. So now what we need to do is write that function. So here it is. Function restore ship. Open and close parentheses, open curly brace, and a close curly brace. So in this function, what we'll do, it's actually pretty simple. We'll say ship init. And ship init is our ship init function that we've already written which initialized the spaceship. If you remember up here, let's see, we have it here somewhere. Ship in it will attach the ship movie clip from the library, give it a new name, set it to the center of the screen, set velocity X and velocity Y, give it an on enter frame handler, which runs our controls, and then set the rotate and thrust. So that's what we do right there. We say, so we'll run the ship init function, and then we'll set the ship dead variable equal to false, because now the ship is back in business. Once we've run the ship init function, set the ship dead variable back to false, because the ship's alive now, then we want to also clear the interval that we set. Otherwise, it's going to keep going off every five seconds. So we clear the interval and then pass it which interval we want to clear. And that was restore ID. Remember, capital I, capital D. 
and that will clear that interval. So let's see if it works. So we hit Control Enter. There's our ship. Our ship explodes. One, two, three, four, five. And there's the new ship. All right, and then we do it again. The ship explodes. Notice we only have one life left now. And there's the new ship. And now we should have no lives left and so we shouldn't see the ship restore and if we had a game over uh, keyframe right if we had a, a keyframe for game over we'd be going there right now now a couple other things that I want to point out and that is is once the game is over we want to do a few other things we want to make sure that if the game is over that we stop running all functions so if lives is less than one go to and stop game over but also what we want to do is make sure that we delete the asteroid underscore MC dot on enter frame handler so we can delete the asteroids on enter frame handler and we can delete ship underscore MC dot on enter frame so we can stop both of those so if that works, then once we've died three times, we should see all of the asteroids stop moving because we're no longer calling the on-enter frame handler 65 frames per second. Now, if that happens, we probably also want to, if we're going to stop all the asteroids from flying around once the game is over, we probably also want to remove them from the screen. And we can do that by using a for loop. So here's the structure of a for loop. And what we could do is we can loop through all of the asteroids and then remove each one of them from the screen. And to do that, what we do is we say for, and then we give it our integer, i equals zero, then a semicolon, as long as i is less than the asteroid array dot length then we increment our integer i plus plus so this will create a loop that will loop through however many asteroids are in the asteroid array we go in there and then we say remove movie clip and then we just point it to the asteroid array and pass it the i integer that we're on in the loop. So it starts at zero, then when it increments it goes to one. So that will go into the asteroid array. It'll pull out the first asteroid movie clip, and then the second, and then the third. We have to put an end parentheses here, and then a semicolon. So now that we finished our for loop, and we're looping through all of the asteroids and removing them, let's test it out. So we'll hit Control Enter, and we'll see if we can have this work. Okay, there our first ship has been destroyed. And the second ship's destroyed. Okay, and this is the last ship. And if everything works correctly, once this ship is destroyed, all of the asteroids should be removed from the screen. And you can see the last explosion happened. The ship does not reinitialize and the loop worked and the for loop looped through all the asteroids that were on the stage and they were all removed.